Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah ma ba'd. The question is asking about buy now and pay later schemes. This is where a person buys now and they pay later. I guess it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Now, buy now and pay later schemes are of two types. Permissible form, impermissible form. Let's take the impermissible form first. This is where a person goes to the merchant. Uh, this is quite often used when they are selling things which are expensive houses cars it could be even in the smaller objects and the smaller items but typically in the more expensive ones so the merchant will then say to them okay if you don't have enough money to buy the item what i will do is i'll loan you the money then you can go and buy it and then you can pay me back the loan uh, obviously with riba on top so they will lend you a thousand and they will expect 120, 120, 125, 130, 150,000 in return. This is riba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya amanu, la ta'kulu riba adha'afan mudha'afa wa ta'kulu ala lakum tuflihun. Don't take a loan and expect, or sorry, don't give a loan and expect more in return. And fear Allah so that you will be successful. Therefore, this riba is clear and it is a major sin. And, you know, a person must avoid that. Let me give you an example of what happens on a daily basis. And unfortunately, a lot of Muslims are being caught up in this. When you go to buy a car, uh, when you go to the showroom, quite often, car companies will have their own finance company. And it might not be that obvious. I'm not saying all forms of car finance are the same, but this is quite typical. So you go into the Ford showroom, Vauxhall, Mercedes, wherever it is, and you say, I want this car. They'll give you a pricing plan. You agree with everything. And then what they will do is they will do a credit check. This is because the same car company has a loans company and they will loan you the money. So when you're paying the car in installments, you're actually paying off the loan with riba on it and you are not paying installments for the car. I'm not trying to say, again, I'm not trying to say that all uh, you know, car schemes are the same. Obviously, there are going to be that are different. But I've experienced this myself. Go into the showroom, you agree with everything, and then they'll send you to an office on the side where they do a credit check. And this is the car finance loans company. And I'm thinking, okay, that's the loan that they're giving me, and it's not me paying in installments. That is clear, Riba. That kind of buy now, pay later is not permissible. The second type is where it is permissible. And the ulama have mentioned this in the books of fiqh. So say, for example, a person wants to buy a sofa sofa costs 700 pounds 800 pounds can't afford to pay it off in one go so the company will then or the showroom the store will then say to you listen you can't pay it off in one go you can pay in installments 50 pound a month but that price will go up according to an apr that we have and you will end up paying about 900 850 something like that maybe even more that is permissible that is because you're not taking a loan you're paying off the item in installments and in exchange for a delay you are paying extra that is permissible in the in the window how are you okay sure. but the second part of your question is uh, something that we all need to pay attention to now this here uh, you cannot get away from it in any form of contract which is late penalty fees uh, and a penalty for delay no, I, I always hear you on my mom's I'm phone. recording one now so now you're going to be on it as well do you want to say something? say salam alaikum to everyone salam alaikum what's your name? Marwa how old are you? five years old five years old do you want to say something? who's, your, who's the best person that you like listening to on YouTube? Peter Rabbit. What Peter Rabbit? Well, you're supposed to say my name. You're supposed to say Arif Ola. Let me ask you a question again. Then. Who's the, who's your most favourite person on YouTube? Oh my God! Second time. This is bad. I'm gonna stop conversation with you and I'm gonna go back to this. Is that all right? Do you wanna go play? Yeah, go on. Then. Right. Late penalty fees and exchange. Uh, what do you call it? Late penalty fees. And there's another terminology for it, I've forgotten what it's called, because I got disturbed. But late penalty fees, what's the ruling on that? Now, the ulama have said, if I owe you some money, and because of a delay, there's going to be an extra charge, that's riba. That's riba, that's clear riba. Some of the contemporaries have said, look, because you can't get away from it, then it becomes permissible for you to get involved in those kind of contracts. However, if they mean, Imam Noah has mentioned this before in the Hadith of Jabir, the explanation of the Hadith of Jabir in Sahih Muslim. لعن رسول الله آكل الربا آخذ شاهدي 
وكاتب كلهم سواد مسنجر الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said the one who takes the riba the one who gives the riba the one who witnesses it, the one who writes it كلهم سواد مسنجر الله صلى الله عليه وسلم all of them are the same therefore if you are agreeing to that kind of a contract you are still included as a person who has engaged in riba and this is quite clear and this is like I said a view of many of the contemporaries uh, from the other so I would say stay away from it however however Imam al-Sa'di rahimahullah gives down a very important principle and this is again found in the books of fiqh if there is a contract that you need to get involved with and it's got a haram condition and everyone's got that haram condition everywhere it becomes permissible for you to engage in that contract out of necessity and this is perhaps why you will find the khilaf between the ulama so you might find certain scholars saying late penalty fees haram 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 but there's no movement you can't get away from it so then what do we do we say it's permissible but what we need to say that there is a difference we need to say no in its base ruling it is haram and it becomes permissible out of necessity if there is a necessity for a person to engage in something like that you know by now late pay later scheme right the last thing though i want to mention now this is very important when it comes to this issue when it comes to all kinds of issues uh, connected to islamic fiqh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this religion not that we will be scared and worried and stressed out so a person might think okay well i've got involved in uh, a transaction which I believe now is haram What do I do? Panic No, don't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about riba If you Now Ibn Taymiyyah about this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Let me translate ayah first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that If you make tawbah from riba You will have your capital sums back And you will not be oppressed And you will not be uh, You know You will not be undone or unjustly treated in the slightest. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Ibn Uthaymin follows this opinion also. Uh, the things that we can learn from this ayah is that if you engage in a transaction which you thought was permissible, but later found out was impermissible, you can carry on with that transaction. Allahu Akbar, the rahmah of Allah. The sharia has been made easy. So if you have engaged in something that you didn't know was permissible out of mistake, then you are not held to account. Obviously, if you can remove it, that is better. If you can't, quite often you are fixed into a contract, then there is no harm, inshallah, in continuing. But if you can ask for them to remove uh, you know, haram aspects once the contract has begun, then a person must do so. Uh, these are some of the ahkam connected to buy now and pay later and other um, you know, financial contracts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he helps purify our wealth and he helps us to have the correct understanding of the religion so that we'll be blessed in everything that he gives us. Allahu alam.